Hello, welcome to Face to Face. My name is Umaru Sandamado. This is City TV. Today we are focusing on a very important sector of our economy. How are we doing on the cocoa sector? Father, people even think that the yellow in the in the Ghana flag is cocoa. Then they realize that there's green in the Ghana flag and they thought again that's a Greek, it may be cocoa. How are we doing in terms of cocoa? My guest is with the cocoa board. My guest is a trained journalist, at least he's been a broadcaster, but now he's heading publication or communication at the Ghana Cocoa Board, Fifi Buafo. You're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you, Sandra. How is it going? It could have been better, but we'll manage with this. Are you, are you finding your way properly in the cocoa field, is it? Well, um, I'm not the person to judge myself, but I think to a very large extent, I am able to perform the responsibility given me. and. Uh, my bosses have also indicated that, well, they are impressed with what I'm doing so far. Mm. And of course, there's every, there's every opportunity for me to learn on the job on a daily basis and do better than I'm doing. So yeah, it's not been bad, but then you are the judges to <laughs> tell me as to mm. how I'm doing, yeah. Okay. Do you have a cocoa farm yet? A cocoa farm, in fact, the truth is that I've, I have had a cocoa farm oh. sometime, even before joining Cocoa Board. Okay. My father used to have a cocoa farm. Okay. I've been to cocoa farms, yeah, way before I joined Cocoa Board. Uh, uh, tell me, I know I can have a yard behind my house and plant, grow maize or cassava. So that's the kind of farm I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so I want to know whether, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it easy for an ordinary person to be a cocoa farmer? Because I always get the sense that cocoa, dear, unless it's like complex and it is owned or regulated by the state or something. How easy is an ordinary person if you wanted to do a cocoa farm? Everyone can be a cocoa farmer. And in fact, if you go to our uh, uh, local communities, uh, smaller towns and villages, uh, there are a lot of people who have cocoa farms. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people also tell you that um, if you're a rich man in Ghana and you do not have a cocoa farm, especially for those who come from the typical Akan communities, it is deemed that it's incomplete. Your success is incomplete without owning a cocoa farm. So mm -hmm. our friends who own cocoa farms, not to make money out of it, but because they consider it as part of a prestige. You okay. come from a typical Akan community and you okay. have a cocoa farm. Oh, the cocoa food crane. Wow. Uh -huh. So everybody can be a cocoa farmer. What you cannot do is that you cannot sell cocoa outside Ghana. Okay. The, the law prohibits that. You, mm -hmm. must, you can only sell cocoa through uh, Ghana Cocoa Board approved agent, which is the cocoa marketing company. So every cocoa producer in Ghana has to sell to Cocoa Board through the companies? Yes, so um, Cocoa Board is the authority responsible for the cocoa industry in Ghana. Prior to 1992, uh, Cocoa Board was responsible for buying cocoa from the farmers through the Produce Buying Company, PBC. But later on, the uh, government took the decision to liberalize the industry where we have licensed buying companies. So PBC at the time was moved from Cocoa Board to become an independent organization. A competitor among the other LBs. Among so other LBs. Okay. So you have... Uh, PBC is state-owned, but you have private companies. Some of them are uh, local Ghanaians who own them, and there are foreign companies in the industry presently. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've moved on from that point. But all these companies are agents of Cocoa Board who have been given the permission or the license, if you like, to buy cocoa on behalf of Cocoa Board. So when you buy the cocoa, you submit it to Cocoa Board, and then Cocoa Board will sell it. But because Cocoa Board is a state entity, and authority, we cannot do trading properly, so called. So, we've set up a company which is part of Cocoa Board. It's called the Cocoa Management Com uh, Cocoa, uh, Cocoa Marketing Company, okay. CMC. Okay. They do the trading on behalf of Cocoa Board. So, they buy from the LBCs? No, no, the, the agent, the licensed buying companies buy. Mm -hmm. And then, when they buy the company, uh, the Cocoa, Cocoa, it is given to Cocoa Board. And on behalf of Cocoa Board, the trading is done by Cocoa Marketing Company. Oh, okay. And okay. CMC is part of Cocoa Board. So then they do the selling outside, outside our shores. Yeah. 
Oh, I see. Now, explain to me again. You were saying that everybody can have a farm. So you need a land, just like a regular land in a cocoa growing area, and you, you are ready? It's just like uh, doing tomato, uh, cassava plantain. But the difference with cocoa is that um, because cocoa board is well regulated, we discourage individuals just picking their own uh, pots and start planting because uh, we have a research institute at TAFO, that's the Cocoa uh, Research Institute of Ghana, Craig. They will do proper research to know which seedlings are good and they yield well, and then also they are able to uh, withstand pests and diseases and other diseases that attack cocoa industry. So we have a division called the Cocoa uh, Seed Production Division of Cocoa Board. They will do the nursery for the farmers, so when we raise the nurseries, then you pick them up, and then you go and the seedlings when we raise them, you pick them up. Okay, so I can't just them. decide that I have some cocoa beans. Let me put them in the soil. Some it has to go through that process. Some do, but we advise against it okay. because the challenge with this is that you might go see this uh, pot in someone's farm, quite good, and then looks attractive, but the truth is that when you go and plant it. In terms of... Uh, the environment may not be the same. The, so the, the yield same. will not come up as you expected yeah. it to be. And I would do... Uh, the scientists will tell you there are things they look out for. Uh, how easy would it be for pests and diseases to attack such a farm? And then they have to do what they call... Uh, picking one pot, mixing it with another pot and all that. So they know mm -hmm. very well the effect you get when you plant so those they, seedlings. So they genetically modify almost? It is not genetically modified per, uh, properly so-called. Mm. But then, of course, it goes through a process to ensure that you get the right seedlings to plant, which will give you the result you are looking so for. So back again to the ordinary person. So if I have a, a piece of land, mm -hmm. does Cocoa Board help me clear the land? No, that is done by the Cocoa Farmers. There are, so there's, I do something, there's something happening at the moment, the rehabilitation. We help you do that. But a normal cocoa farmer or a normal person who wants to uh, go into cocoa farm, you clear the land yourself. You give me the seedlings for free? Yes, the seedlings is for free. So you give me seedlings for free? In fact, this year we produced 70 million seedlings. Wow. For free to cocoa farmers. So you just go and pick it and go and... Yeah, you go and pick it. And what other support do you provide me after the seedlings? So after the seedlings, we provide with extension service. So agri extension officers come around to check how yeah. they're doing... The last three years, we have hired 1,300 extension officers. Uh, prior to 2017, I think there are numbers were about 400. Management took the decision that in order to get the result we are looking for, there's the need for us to improve on extension service. So we've hired 1,300 more. So on our, our staff strength for extension is about 1,700 mm. who interact with the farmers, guide them and direct them what they are supposed to do to ensure that they make good use of the ceilings given to them. And so yes, they are there to support the farm. Then you also provide farm inputs. Yes, we provide a farm input. Um, we have uh, fungicides, pesticides, uh, fertilizers, among others, which we give to the cocoa farmers. So it depends on the stage where the farm is. At the early stages, you might not need some of them, but then as they start fruiting, uh, those that are attacked by pests, those that are attacked by other diseases, we give them support. So like we have black pod and all that, which we have chemicals, which we give to the farmers mm -hmm. to spray. And are it these is also for free or they it, are paid yeah, for? Yeah, it is for free. So, so because the state is interested in high yields, we invest that much, even though it's a private personal farm of somebody, you still supply them with these? We, we supply them because, you see, if we do not, we have not gotten to a point or a stage where the farmers really realized that there are certain actions they have to take to protect their farms, also to ensure that there's better yield. So Cocoa Board plays that role for them. But on top of that, we still encourage, the extension people encourage the farmers that, apart from the spraying we do for them, and of course the uh, pesticides and the fungicides we talked about, the chemicals, we do not just take buy them and give it to them. Okay. We actually hire people to do the spraying oh. for them. Yeah. So you provide a chemical, give it to people to go and do the spray. And what, they spray everywhere or in some localities? Or how do you the, do it? The, the idea is to spray every farm. Because the challenge with it is that, for example, if I have my farm, 
is closer to yours. Mm -hmm. If I spray my farm and you do not spray, the challenge is that the pests that are attacking your, my farm will, will leave to your farm. Yeah. And then after spraying for some time, they will come back. Mm -hmm. The uh, chemicals we spray, we have two different types. There are those that are contacts. So when the pests are in the farm and they spray and they come in contact with the chemical sprayed, the pest will die. There are those that will stay in the farm for some time. So when they come back, but then for how long would you be able to have that chemical in the mm -hmm. farm such that when they come back, mm -hmm. they will die? Mm -hmm. So if you do not spray contiguous, you still have the problem which you try to solve. So yes, we'll do that for the farmers to convince ourselves that yes, indeed, we've been able to deal with the problem we are fighting mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. Then, so harvesting, do you help them with harvesting too? No, they do that themselves. You, you do have it. Yeah. So when, at what point does the farmer cease to own the... Okay, after they harvest, they dry the beans, all of that thing. Mm -hmm. Then they bag it. You also have a jilt bag, something, something. Yeah, yeah the, the, the you sacks. supply sacks to yeah, the people. Yeah, we supply it to the lines. Why do you have companies? to supply them a sack? Can't I go and buy my own sack, load my beans, and sell? No, no, you can buy your own sack, put it in, and then send it to the uh, what you call it, the license buying company agent. But you see, um, well, even with the sacks, the, the buyers have certain expectation. What exactly they look at, look forward to? in terms of how the cocoa is backed. Mm -hmm. So if you use the plastic ones, that is not the required one the buyers expect. So we need to have a certain quality. One thing that I need to let you know is that within the cocoa value chain, or the cocoa industry, at least in Ghana, every activity that requires uh, application of chemicals or machinery or anything, it has to be approved by the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana. And without the approval, its application will be going against the law governing our activity. Okay. So we make sure it is to, you know, Ghana's cocoa is considered the best cocoa in the world. And it is not just by sheer coincidence. It is based on the fact that certain amount of work is put in to ensure we get that result. Some deliberateness. So, yes. Okay. So like the fumigation and we do, like how we ferment our cocoa mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. is to achieve a certain result. The flavor you get if you ferment it well, mm -hmm. unlike in the other countries. In fact, I went to Ecuador and I saw how cocoa was treated. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. that really how people It's substandard. It, it's nothing compared to what we do. Talking and that's what gets us the value. Talking about the bagging, I have seen a report suggesting that they do something either to the scale or to the sack. Oh, exactly. There's some corruption in there. Yes. Who does that corruption and who benefits? The beneficiaries are the licensed buying companies. What do they do exactly? They temper with the scales. So when they come to your farm with a scale or when they come okay, to load so your bag. You are not supposed to even take the scales around. Okay. You are supposed to keep it at the point of sale. Mm -hmm. where the farmers bring their cocoa to come So every sell. farmer cuts their produce to a centralized location. Yes. Then this buyer has a scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you bring a sack, you put it on it, they weigh it, and they tell you this is the price. Okay, so the sack is believed to weigh one kilo. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're supposed to, the bag is supposed to weigh 65 kilos. So they take the one out. But some of them adjust the scales. So when they adjust the scale, even though it's supposed to weigh 65, if you put it on, they may have adjusted it for like six kilos, seven, eight, and to some extent, 12 kilos. So the farmers lose a lot in that. That is why management so has taken so the... So the farmers will be told that what you brought is not enough. So you have to top up top or up. you get less than what you expected. I see. And you are not supposed to... Uh, well, the, if you have the bag, it's 65 kilos. Mm -hmm. But then there are those who have, like, say, 2 kilos, okay. 15 kilos. So we paid how much... So they cheat them. They cheat them, yes. And, this and that has been dealt with now. How are you doing it? So is this your job to yes, deal with? Yes, as a regulator, it's our responsibility to ensure okay. that farmers are So how are you are doing it? Have, okay. have some companies been called out? Have some oh yes, been some of them have been uh, sanctioned for doing so. We have a uh, standards authority who go around, we commission them to go around to check if the scales that have been approved is what is being used or they have different skills or skills that they have adjusted. And if you've adjusted the skills and the uh, standards authority uh, catches you, a sanction will apply. But we feel that the sanctions are not punitive enough because the law that governs standards authority, the kind of sanctions that uh, apply, they are not punitive enough. And then we also believe that 
until these licenses, uh, the standard authority going round to find these LBCs indulging in such a criminal act, uh, the farmers will continue to be cheated. So yes, we have gone to a stage where uh, very soon, in fact, the expectation was to have a new skills which Cocoa Board was going to give to all licensed buying companies without which you cannot buy cocoa. Uh, the expectation was to have it start the beginning of this season. Our season usually starts in October. Unfortunately, the delay in the procurement processes has not made it possible, but we are still expecting to have them in very soon. Okay. These skills, you cannot temper with. They are electronic skills, so it takes away, eradicates that scheme where you have licensed buying companies cheating cocoa farmers, and you are able to make sure that the farmers get the exact value of the cocoa they present to the licensed buying companies. If we're doing so well in terms of supporting farmers, why have we lost our place as number two? Or uh, we lost our place as number one to Ivory Coast? In fact, the history tells us that at a point we're number three. Okay, but so uh, we've, we've been uh, number two for some time now. We have a challenge with our land tenure system. I think to a large extent that is really the cause of we not being able to catch up with Cote d'Ivoire. Because when you go to Cote d'Ivoire, most cocoa farms are plantations, huge plantations. To have cocoa plantations in Ghana is a bit difficult. The officers who, who work on this will tell you that you have in a situation where in Ghana, I have a, fa uh, a land, a, a plot of land, mm -hmm. a piece of land. I own it with my sisters or with my cousins. It's a family land and all that. It is difficult for the family to come to an agreement that we are giving this whole land to Fifi, who wants to do cocoa farm. Because when you do cocoa farm, 30, 35 years, sometimes even 40, 50 years, we have the farm on that land. So they are reluctant in giving it out. Some members of the family will be prepared to do so. Others will not be prepared to do so. So it's there's that huge challenge we have in having these plantations. So our farming largely has been left in the hands of um, smallholder farmers who have average of three acres. So smaller farms. And because they are smaller farms, hand-to-mouth kind of business. You have very less investment going into it, and it is not run with a proper business model. Yes, that they feel that, yes, with cocoa, at least you can be guaranteed some amount of money coming in. So everyone within our local communities will want to do that. But the truth is that our system of farming has not been helpful. I think in, in recently, mm -hmm. uh, the board has taken the decision that management ought to encourage people who want to go into plantations to have negotiation with such families and uh, okay. to that have these lands to help them do so. Okay. We, and then on, on top of that, as part of our youth in cocoa farming, we are also facilitating uh, youth who have come together as a group who want to go into cocoa farming to do so. So that is to help them at least have these well-organized and well-structured farms to help us. Cocoa Board is a huge investment. You sit on a huge budget. Every year you get over 1.3 billion abroad to bring into this country. That's no mean an organization. Why don't we have Cocoa Board farms cocoa or board state cocoa farms? I'm sure we are very much aware of what we have as states, this, state that, state this, state that, and how we've handled that as a country. Cocoa Board cannot do everything. So you have Cocoa Board facilitating for people to do it. Uh, the, it's not a case that Ghana has never had a history of having state farms. We've had a history of state farms. The question we need to ask ourselves is what was the result? Okay. Okay. We do not have the state farms anymore. Okay. But I believe strongly that if we are able to facilitate, get people to do it, it will not be out of place. So we learned from history, and we have to be guided by that. When you talk about cocoa production, for critics, we have we have, we have people who are struggling to produce cocoa and all of this, and yet we don't process it here. We export everything. So you have just become an agent as Cocoa Board that exports our beans. Why doesn't Cocoa Board consider processing? Maybe we should even do our own chocolate here instead of going to Switzerland. We do chocolate what here. What seems to be the problem? We do chocolate here. We have Cocoa Processing Company, okay. CPC, which Cocoa Board is the majority shareholder. Okay. But you see, 
there's one very important aspect of this conversation which is usually lost on us when the issue about processing come, processing come up. And that has to do with uh, the markets for cocoa consumption. I can bet my last coin that uh, the chocolate sander would take in a year be something insignificant. Two bars at most. <laughs> <laughs> so if we are put, sander has the purchasing power, the income to spend, but he's not used to chocolate consumption. And it's a case for most of us. We grew up with seeing chocolate as a treat, something for leisure, something for the bourgeois. Not a regular diet. Not a regular diet. It's not for... There, there was an Akufado promise to give one chocolate per we, child we, per we, day. We'll get, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get, so it is not part of our upgrowing. So Coco Board at a point took a decision that let us make it part of our upbringing bringing, mm -hmm. where children are introduced to the consumption of chocolate and cocoa products generally. And I remember the kind of reaction we had from the media when they say, hey, government is going to spend all this amount of money to buy chocolate. Forgetting that that's an investment. You invest in your people who develop the taste. So when I, now your children coming up, they know chocolate, they eat chocolate, they want chocolate. So in 10 years time, if we set up a factory that is processing cocoa, your child has the taste for chocolate, your child will ask you, Daddy, get me chocolate. You buy chocolate for that children. There's market for it. So if I'm coming to set up a company to produce chocolate. You have a market. You have a market for that. Okay. The market is non-existent. But that's still notwithstanding. I think some progress has been made. Uh, for example, in 2016, uh, our processing level was about uh, 25, 27 now we have almost 40% in the last three years. 40% 40, 40 of, of total? Total cuckoo production. Oh, really? Yeah. We process it here. We process it here. Okay. But what we do is that we do the basic processing, not just the beans itself, but we move it from the case of uh, liquor, butter, and cake. We do not go to the tertiary level. We don't do finished products for that we can sell, but at least yeah. you you, you add some value to okay. it. Okay. So, but then, of course, our company CPC is doing quite well. Okay. Nature is a private company, brilliant company. Now mm. they have market outside. But you see, there's another challenge we, which we have mm. that has to do with barriers where when you send finished product outside, it comes with a certain tax says that you face when you send it to certain markets. Okay. Okay. So the company that is going into processing will ask himself, if I'm supposed to buy the beans, I buy it without these tax restrictions to go and process it in, say, Switzerland, Belgium, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. any of the big mm -hmm. uh, processing companies. Instead of doing that, and then processing it in Ghana, where when I send my finished product, it comes at a cost. OK, we need to go back. The president's promise for one chocolate per child per day, is it going to happen? In fact, we've looked at the numbers. It's, it's huge. It's huge. And then I'm sure when the media started complaining about, why do you want to spend this amount of money giving children chocolate? It has given a cause for management to thoroughly interrogate the numbers to convince ourselves. Is it still worth the business model okay. to continue giving the children uh, the chocolate? Continue or, or start? It hasn't started. Though. Oh, yeah. To start, the, start mm -hmm. that whole activity. Mm -hmm. It has not been abandoned, okay. but of course, uh, if it's on if, ice. If, no, it's not on ice. If you, we work for this, the people. So if you are initiating a process where concerns are raised, it is better for you to convince yourself and to convince the people you are serving that okay. this is worthy of implementing. Well. This is face to face on City TV. My guest is Fifi Boafo. He's head of uh, communication at the Ghana Cocoa Board. My name is Omaru Sandamon. When we come back, Cocoa Board has introduced something new. Um, it says Cocoa Management System. What animal is that?
Don't forget the balloons, Check. the DJ, Check. and the drinks. Listen, honey, I've got this party under control, okay? Daddy, <laughs> don't forget our birthday cake with the sparkly candles. Daddy, are you there? The parties are 4 p.m., honey. Don't be late. <laughs> With the all new CowPay on the CowBank app and website, you don't have to worry about carrying cash. Just place your order with your favorite merchant and pay with a Visa or MasterCard, mobile money or CowBank account, or scan and pay. Visit the Play Store or App Store and download the CowBank app today. CowBank app. Forget to cash. CowBank. Forward. Together. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. I am Omar Rosanda. My guest is Fifi Boafo. He's with Coco Board. You're welcome back. Um, you. Coco Board has gone to the AFDB, African Development Bank. You have asked for $600 million. You've yes. been giving them money. What are you doing with $600 million? Uh, well, uh, we took, we contracted for $600 million. I think we've done a drawdown of 200 already. We are to do rehabilitation of farms, uh, diseased farms, and specifically swollen shoot virus disease. Uh, moribund farms and then uh, we are also to do processing part of the money is to go into processing to support local processing companies because we realized that most of the local processing companies their challenge has to do with capital to work with so Coco Board is facilitating this for them such that we'll be able to capitalize them where we are able to deal with the concern you raised about uh, local processing. processing so we are able to scale up the processing we do These locally. are private companies or state companies? Some of them are private. Uh, the only company that is state, state has shares because it's exactly. Coco Board has shares a CPC, but the rest are private companies. So you give but them loans or you give them money to So say what we'll do is that we'll do bean supply. You remember uh, Wamco, proud to 2017, Wamco had been closed down for about uh, three years. The main challenge was with beans, and the management at the time were of the view that they were not uh, paying for the beans that they were procuring and all that. When the new management took over, the decision they took was that we have an arrangement with you. We will supply you with the beans. After processing, you don't sell the beans. We will sell the beans on your behalf. When we sell the beans, the amount of money that come in will take the money for the beans and give you the rest for you to work with. This has worked perfectly. Now about 270 employees of Wamco who had been asked to stay home. And the sad thing is that there were some of them who were actually coming to Accra to petition parliament. On their way somewhere around Beposo, they had an accident and some of them died. Oh. Sadly, yeah. But now, because of this new arrangement, you have Wamco working, making profit. In fact, last year, my information is that Wankum was able to make a $2.5 million profit. They have now paid all the staff who were asked to go home, their compensation, they've come back to work. The point about the rehabilitation I talked about, swollen shoot virus disease, before COVID we had our own virus, mm -hmm. has been with us over the years. But what Coco Board was doing was uh, supporting the farmers to treat it, as isolate them because the virus, we do not have uh, any chemical that treats it. So we just have to cut it, make sure that we have, get the roots, everything from the soil, mm -hmm. so that you save the trees from getting infected with the virus. Unfortunately, at a point in our history around 2014, management took the decision that uh, going forward, it's the responsibility of the farmers to maintain their farms, and they must treat all those uh, diseased Viruses. farms. Be the farmers did not do it because my boss usually, I'm referring to the chief executive, cites the example of someone who completed junior high school with Sander. Sander went to secondary school and that person decided to go into cocoa farming. And Sander has proceeded to GIJ. Now he works with CTTV. He's a big man earning income at the end of every month. Allegedly. The big, well, man, the big man part, continue. <laughs> 
statement of fact, trite knowledge. Okay. So Sanda is earning income. His colleague, who decided to go into Cocoa Farm, now has a farm. Unfortunately, that farm has been attacked by the solar shoot viral disease. All we do is tell him, go cut everything down. When you cut it, we'll give you seedlings to start life afresh. The question is, would I be motivated to start life afresh at the time my colleague, who I completed GSS with, is way ahead. Is way ahead, is earning an income. What am I going to rely on? What would my family feed on? So it, it was a complete disincentive to get them to treat those farms. So they abandoned it. And the result is that we had just two regions. It was actually part of Eastern region and part of Western North, which used to be the major source of cocoa production in Ghana. Western North used to be the major source of cocoa production. At the point, Western North alone was producing about 350,000 metric tons. In fact, one third of our entire annual production. Now, Western North is producing about 140,000. The reason is simple. Because solar shoot was not treated, the other farms were affected, and now they are not producing anything. In fact, the last time I was in Western North was uh, just about three weeks ago. We drove from Jaboso through Bonsunquanta to Enchi. And Bonsunquanta, I understand, just Bonsunquanta area had three cocoa districts because of the kind of production in that area. So cocoa district is your own we system our own, that you yeah, have? Yeah, we have our own district. We mm -hmm. have our own regions, mm -hmm. different from the, mm -hmm. uh, traditional. the traditional or the national ones mm -hmm. we have. Just that small community had two, three districts. It means the volume is huge. The volumes were huge at the time. Now Bonsun Quanta does not even produce 500 bucks. Wow. That's the extent of the devastation. the devastation. So all these farmers, in fact, uh, most of them came from Ashanti region, some from Bonahafo, some from the Klobo areas who went there to do cocoa farm. They've abandoned their farms. Some they have returned back to their villages. But the good news is that we've already started with rehabilitation and now life has been restored. So rehabilitation now involves what? You do okay. the cutting down yourself? So the, this, this is what the rehabilitation is about. Cocoa Board hires people to cut the affected farms and will do contiguous farms such that the whole block is cleared so you do not have a transfer of the virus to that enclave again. So we cut the farm. And when we cut the farm, we apply the, the, yeah, mm -hmm. we apply the arborecides uh, to make sure that we get the roots from right. the soil where we do not have the virus sitting in the farm. Cocoa Board will provide seedlings. Cocoa Board will hire people to do the line and pegging and plant the cocoa seedlings. But before we do that, we actually buy plantain suckers. The people we have hired will plant the plantain suckers in the farm. When they plant the plantain suckers in the farm, they also maintain the farm for two years. During the period, they also uh, plant uh, what we refer to as uh, commercial trees, as shade mm -hmm. for the cocoa, because cocoa needs shade trees. So we also give them that, and we maintain the farm for two years. On top of that, the plantain we plant in these farms, they don't belong to cocoa board. They are for these farmers. So during the harvesting period, in fact, those that were planted about two years ago, the farmers have already started harvesting. They harvest it, and Cocoa Board will come to you again as we also uh, plant for other farmers to come and buy the plantain suckers from you and pay you so that we go and plant it for you. What's the use of the plantain suckers? The plantain suckers, one, is to give the cocoa uh, shade. Okay. At the early stages, if you do not have some shade on top of the cocoa, they will die. So it, it serves as a shade. And beyond that, it's also some form of income and livelihood. So when the trees get to some age, you can now remove the plantain from the farm. Oh, well, the plantain. Why not? Why not banana? Why plantain? Well, because uh, plantain uh, gives you more okay. in terms of revenue. Okay. It gives you more than that. Okay. But one very important point I need to make is that apart from giving the farmers taking care of the farm for them for two years and all the result and the benefit comes with. We actually give them some money as compensation for losing their livelihood to also encourage and motivate them to go into 
uh, allow for the rehabilitation to take place. So for every hectare, you are given 1,000 cities. And I remember earlier on in the interview, I talked about the fact that um, in some in instances, uh, there are families and individuals, landowners, chiefs who give the farmers the land. The use of fact or the right to use the land is when you have the trees on the on farm. It. In some instances prior to this in the introduction of this new arrangement, there were farmers who agreed to cut it and start afresh. Immediately they cut the tree, the landowner pops up and say, I'm sorry. I'm collecting my land back. May I have my land back? So the new arrangement is that in such instances, the landowner is also giving some compensation okay. to allow the farmer okay. to continue planting. So this is an investment you are planning to do with this facility, the 600. What yeah. else are you using this 600 million? I talked about the processing. Yes. Uh, I talked about farms that are already in a very deplorable state. They are you not very any food. Them. Yes. So we are helping them mm -hmm. to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing cocoa management system. That's a putting a database for cocoa industry. We have, uh, when I joined Cocoa Board some almost four years ago, the information is that we have 800,000 farm households. Who are these people? Where are they? What do they do? Do they have any other source of income? Where is the farm located? And all the issues that come with, there's no reliable data we can work with. And management is of the view that if you are managing such a very such an important state institution, you cannot continue taking decisions based on assumptions. So there's the need to put together a database which will help you to plan, which will help you in the execution of your pro uh, project and programs, and which will also help you in even how monies are paid to cocoa farmers. So that's also one thing we are doing. Uh, one thing which is in there, you asked about the chocolate to farmers. Part of the money was also to promote consumption. We'll be doing promotion and we'll also be helping people get, develop the taste as part of this whole 600 million facility from the African Development So this Bank. cocoa management system, what's the cost? The budget, the projected amount is about $10 million. So $10 million for gathering or collecting or putting together a database, convince the viewer why you should be allowed to or it should be reasonable for Cocoa Board to spend ten million dollars on an Excel spreadsheet. It's not an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, explain them. That's what is different. It? So that's what we are doing. We are not just enumerating farmers. Cocoa Board is actually doing verification of information given to us as part of this project. So we are I come to you, for example, and they say that my name is Omar Rusanda. I am a cocoa farmer. I have a cocoa farm at Yamechan, and I have one at Mehame. The one at Yamechan has eight acres. It has a five-year-old five farm. The one at Mehame is 16 years. This is the size and all that. We actually bring cartographers who come to your farm do the mapping of your farm, collect all the necessary information. So for example, in seasons where we say that we have to deal with black pot, and usually black pot comes at a time where we have rainy season, right. where we have the pots already developed. So we know where the farms are located. And we'll be able to say that, okay, we have a farm which is say seven years, eight years, or 15 years, they are fruiting. So considering the data we have on rainfall pattern, there's the need for us to quickly dispatch chemicals to go and spray these farms. So we are, one, taking data of the farm itself, enumerating all the persons involved, and it is going, we have a software that has been developed that will be managing the industry. So at the close of day, as we started the season, we'll be able to tell that today, we've bought 500 bags of cocoa in a same district. Payment of cocoa farmers, the platform is going to serve as the basis for payment of cocoa farmers. Unfortunately, our industry has been plagued with robberies, attacks of cocoa farmers, licensed buying companies, and their agents, where people pick money because everything is done cash. With cash. You go to the licensed buying company agent to sell your cocoa, it takes your cocoa, cho -cho 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 -cho. the money is counted and given to you. People attack you and all that. But now you have a code 
or we have a card that gives your details and everything. So immediately you sell, it indicates that Sander has sold his cocoa at this uh, LBC station and this part. And then the money hits your, if you prefer, say, mobile money or the account, and you are able to go and take it when you want to. This is for every farmer? This is for every cocoa farmer in Ghana. Because the system as we are putting together, without it, you will not be able to sell cocoa going forward. Of course, there will be a period in time where if you are a farmer, you are not registered. A special dispensation can be created for you to do so. But eventually, if you are not on, you cannot sell. Because one of the things that is also happening, people actually go and steal the cocoa beans when the, the farmers are drying them. And go and sell. And go and sell. So now you can't go and, and sell. Everybody can go and sell cocoa. But going forward, when the system is in place, you can only sell cocoa when you have a card and then you have a farm. So, for example, I have a farm. There's a record of me selling between, say, 30 to 50 bucks over the last five years. Tomorrow I wake up and then I go and say I'm selling 500 bucks. It will trigger on the system for us to know where did he get that cocoa from? Mm. Because we have data on your farm. So it is practically impossible. So we are moving cocoa industry to a level where we use data to manage the system and not assumption okay. and what belief. So, so the Ghana Statistical Service does a census every 10 years. When they go to people's homes, they ask plenty of questions. I'm sure they'll ask you what business you do. Yeah. That's one way of getting harvesting data on cocoa farmers. The National Identification Authority has identified people. It has issued us with cards. What you're going to do, is it not going to be a duplicity of information? You could have relied on the existing information by these two institutions. Okay, so um, you, you've done your national identification card. Can you remember the sort of questions you were asked? I cannot, but I'm sure as Coco Board, if you want to ask Ghana... No, 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 I, I, I'm just building I, I don't. point. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, I remember the questions that were at, I, was, I was asked at the time of the census. And they are not comprehensive enough. So, for example, when they give us information on the number of farms I have... No, definitely not. No, definitely not. Mm. You do not have data on your dependents. There's no data on as to whether or not your farm... Uh, it is a Bunu or a Bunu system. Who owns the land, whether I own it myself or not? One of the, and we are not doing this uh, on the blind side of other systems we have in place. So for biometric data, for example, of all the people we are registering, we are relying on National Identification Authority to help us in doing so. So it saves us some money which we will not spend off the projected budget we're mm -hmm. going to use for this purpose. So it's not a case of just throwing in money which we could have gotten information from So Kobo is planning to have a database of farmers. What period are you going to start gathering this information? The expectation is that uh, in a matter of days, it will be launched. We've already started the process of sensitization because we need to get all stakeholders well briefed and informed of this whole system. So after briefing them of the arrangement put in place, we'll go around and start registering the cocoa farmers. And the expectation is that uh, in about two weeks after the launch, which we believe should be in days, we'll start, start the exercise. Do of you have an estimated event. period of this enumeration? It, it is believed that by a, within a year, we should have compiled data of every cocoa farmer in Ghana. So after a year, 2021, 22, if I come to Cocoa Board and I want to know how many farmers are in, I like the name of the town you mentioned. Yamecha. Yes, I like the sound. If I <laughs> ask you to give I me know, the I name, know why you like it. I don't. I don't think <laughs> you. If I ask you to give me the names of all the farmers there, you can give it to me, their descendants, their acreage, everything, you can provide that with me. That's the whole idea. How did you settle on this company? Did National Procurement Authority give It went give through me? the procurement process. Uh, so it was not like, I like your face, so come and work for us. It we went through the Because we have procurement. a history of procurement issues and you are a state institution, it's fair that you give us all this information. So it's 10 million, that's a cost. No, 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 no. okay. So that's, that's a, that a useful information you need. What the company did for us, the company is called Digital Innova. Okay. What they did for us or what they are providing us is the database, mm -hmm. uh, the software mm -hmm. for the management of it. Okay. In terms of the enumeration, it's done by people 
my cousins, your cousins, everybody's family members, in the like general Ghanaians in the localities who will be hired by Cocoa Board to render this service. So they just provided you, how much is the software then? Uh, I think it's about three million. Out of the 10 million? Out of the 10 million. So the software costs like three million. They are done with the software, they hand it over to you. Then they, you, you they, they are not just handing it over like, okay, yes, I leave the software with you. They, ha they have to also manage it during the process of collecting the data. So build, operate, transfer, sort of. So thing. after co the data has been collected, it is not going to be in the hands of the, uh, se uh, the contractor anymore. It will be in the hands of our IT system because as part of the contract, they are supposed to train our staff who will manage it. So we will not get to a point where we say that, well, we do not have access to our own data, we do not have access to our own information. It will be handled by our IT staff. And uh, this has been proven to increase our yield or increase our revenue. What, what advantage is it to the Ghanaian? There's no better way to manage an institution with reliable data. Let me give an example. We do not know the farms we have, the stages of these farms. Cocoa is believed that after 25 years, the yield declines. So when this system is put together, on the click of button, we can tell the number of cocoa farms, the hectares of cocoa farms that are, say, 20 years or beyond. So we can safely project that if you have, say, for example, 70% of your farms at age 20, at, at age 20 in five years, in five years time, you, you lose everything. Mm -hmm. Or when you have, say, uh, X number of acreage, below seven years, you know that in about three, four years' time, you'll be having this new production coming on okay. stream. So it helps in planning and it helps okay. in management. Well. But of course, the other thing I did not talk about when I talked about the uh, $600 million facility is to also improve on our productivity enhancement programs. The productivity enhancement programs, we have hand pollination, which is increasing productivity. Okay. We have nationwide pruning exercise, which is also improving productivity. Okay. We are doing irrigation, which is also improving productivity. So okay. all these things will also be going on at the time of the loan period, which will eventually increase productivity. So the, you've got 200 million of the 600 million. Yes, that, that has been from, gone down from already. AFDB. This is face-to-face -face on city. When we come back, uh, Cocoa Road is a big issue. Where are the roads? And where is the contract report or the suspension of the report, the contract report? That should be the right thing. Election 2020, Ghana makes a choice. Tracking and bringing you reports of the presidential and parliamentary campaigns across the length and breadth of this nation. Analyzing campaign activities and election data with our panelists on the Voter's Diary. The Voter's Diary is the most factual, instructive and balanced election 2020 analysis program on television. The Voter's Diary, every weekday on City TV from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Stay informed on all the relevant issues on election 2020. Tune into the Voter's Diary, it's Ghana's choice. On the 7th of December, you will be going to the polls to elect a member of parliament. How well do you know your constituency? We take a visit to the Awutu Senya East constituency of the central region. We are coming to you from the Ishaya Soul constituency in the Ashanti region. I'm still in the Aswase constituency. Political parties will be campaigning for your vote. We have done almost about 80 to 90 different projects across the country. There is no single school under any electoral area that has not seen the development of Honorable Muntaka. But as a constituent, what will inform your choice of a candidate to represent you in parliament? My party is my community. What program are you bringing in to solve the problem of my community? I'm going to go to the party. 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 Be involved in what concerns you. My name is Premier Dunyame. Join me on the constituency for all you need to know concerning your social economic development. The constituency 
airs on City TV Mondays to Thursdays. Welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. Uh, Fifi, when this new administration came into office, we were told that there was some corruption in the Cocoa Road sector. All the contracts were suspended. There was going to be an audit. Where is the report? So, uh, just to correct it, all contracts were not suspended. Many contracts? Some contracts okay. were suspended. Uh, you know, we're doing feeder roads highways and urban roads. Uh, it was actually the feed, uh, urban roads and the <coughs> highways that were suspended. Even with that, in some instances, because of the state in which, or the stage at which the contractors were, there were special dispensation made for them to continue. So uh, those who were doing feeder roads, it was no, there was no way, uh, it, it didn't happen. Okay, let's basically. deal with the highways that you, you agree that there was some suspension of a sort. Okay. And just to clear this, I've heard some politicians, and uh, I, I understand this quite well, the environment in which we find ourselves in, you surely have these shots being fired. 76 of those routes have been completed as of July. Of this year? Of this year. 76 of the routes have been completed by the new management. And these were contracts there that were awarded by the previous management. Okay, hold on. So the, there was a suspension. How did they finish by July? Or they were allowed to finally go back? So the, uh, those about, uh, those who are doing the feeder rules were continuing. After the audits, a number of them were asked to continue. Some contracts were terminated. Some, they, we did what they referred to as rescoping. They rescoped those contracts. So it's, all those contracts, an action has been taken after the report was submitted to Cocoa Board. I, I've had calls why people are ask, uh, where people are asking that. Why are you not releasing the report? The basis of instituting that was certain things that were not clear. So, for example, a contract that was uh, with Ghana, uh, Ghana Highway Authority at a cost of $18 million, it moved to Cocoa Board and the price changed to over 100 million cities. And look at, if you look at all the issues that were coming up, th there was a need for management to convince itself that, hello, is everything all right? And on top of that, Sander, an amount of uh, $450 million had been projected to be spent on these roads for three years. And if you do the calculation, the exchange rate at the time will give you about $1.8 billion. Contract to the tune of 5.1 billion had been awarded. How do you pay for it? There's no provision, there's no allocation made for the payment of these contracts. And on top of that, one revealing thing which the reports brought was the fact that most of these contracts were awarded without uh, proper designs. I'm not an engineer, I wouldn't want to venture into it, but my understanding is that you should be able to tell that. So the road from, say, in Swaim to Benso, this is how much it's going to cost because you have these culverts here, you have this bridge here, you have that here. But we have variation order, which the engineers, uh, the quantity surveyors tell me, is that usually in construction, it should range between 0 to 10% of the contract sum but you have variation orders that go beyond 100% of the contract sum. These were coming in. And to better manage the funds available to you, you needed to know exactly what you are committing okay. to do. But you have allowed some of them after this audit to go back to work. Some oh, have some happen a, a number, number of, of them. Yeah, some happen my, a number my of years My after. information, interestingly, mm. is that contrary to the claim that the only one that was constructed was the one leading to the president's hometown, mm. The president will be in the Volta Ridge, uh, Vol OT region mm -hmm. and per his program, he's commissioning two of these routes okay. that have been completed in OT region. The ones that you have allowed to continue, 
even though you stalled it for a number of years, the argument has been made that that amounts to causing financial loss to the state because you're going to pay extra now for the delay. The equipment have to be removed from the site and have to be remobilized. That's an extra cost. So let me talking about. So cost. your auditing actually ended up no, no, so causing financial talk, loss. Talking about, talking about money. cost, this is what it is. When a road contractor constructs a road, he submits his certificates from the supervising agency. Mm. You have a period where you have to pay. Within that period, if you do not pay, it starts attracting interest. Mm -hmm. It's called delayed or, uh, interest on delayed payments. Mm -hmm. And your budget was 5.1 billion. You've only spent, you only have 1.8 billion, which you've already spent. So the contractors will go ahead, construct those roads, bring you the certificate for you to pay. You do not have the money. That's the truth. And because you do not have the money, you will delay in paying. And when you delay in paying, it starts accruing interest, which you have to pay. That's cost. So the persons who are making the claim that you should have just gone ahead, construct the roads and pay. How are you going to pay? And because you have, and it was risking you interest on delayed payment. So, so that, me, is, that is something persons who felt that it was just a matter of going ahead and constructing roads are not even addressing their money. Say to me on camera now that we haven't lost any money as a result of this audit that we did in the court. You see, when you say you have lost money, it's about uh, just opposing the various scenarios to come to that conclusion. Yeah, if you had left the project to run as was left behind okay, by the past administration. Do, it's, it's for me to do the answering, so mm -hmm. let me answer the question. Mm -hmm. You have to just oppose the cost on delayed payment. You have to just oppose the effect of variations which you are not in the known were going to come in which you have to pay. As against those rules that delayed and now you are convinced about it, how much is going to cost you eventually okay. to know when you are supposed to pay? Very well. You need to take, and you see, on top of it, you can only convince yourself that I'm doing the right thing when you know exactly what you are doing. That's fine. Final question, and I want a yes or a no. Have you recommended anybody for prosecution as a result of this audit? I am not in a position to I mean, Coco Board. tell. Not you as a person, I mean, Coco Yeah, the, the report is out there. But you see, recommendations have been made. And the recommendations made, it is for management to take decisions on based on uh, the position of the board of directors. When are you publishing the report? The board of directors who commissioned this work will make the pronouncement that we've received the report. Bear in mind, there are reports that are commissioned by state institutions. And when you take the report, you take decisions on what exactly to do okay. with these reports. The report is available and... Upon request. Yeah. If anyone wants, you can give... But you okay. can't tell us whether anyone is being prosecuted or will be prosecuted that, as a result. You see, I, I am only head of public affairs. This, was, this work was commissioned by the board of directors. If the board of directors make that pronouncement, I'm free to communicate that to you. Fifi Boafo, Head of Communication or Public Affairs, Kokobo. Thank you for coming on Face. The pleasure is all mine. And that will be it for our show today. My name is Umar Rusanda Amado. Face to Face will be back next week. Keep watching City TV. It's your world.